Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Joshua 6 to 11, Proverbs 5, and Psalm 103. Let's get started. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the men and the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, as his king and the mighty men of power. He shall march around the sea, all the men of war going around the sea at once. Okay. Thus you shall do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets over Ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trump, then all the people shall shout with great shout, and the wall of the sea will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, everyone straight before them. So Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear trumpet, bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Go forth, march around the sea, and let the armed men pass on before the ark of the Lord. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of Ram's horns before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear guard was walking after the Ark, while the trumpets blew continually. And Joshua commanded the people, You shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall any word go out of your mouth, until the day I tell you to shout. And you shall shout. And so he calls me after a large circle of the sea, going about at once. And they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. And then Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. And then the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the iron horns, behold, the ark of the Lord walked on. And they blew the trumpets continually. And the armed men were walking behold, them. And the rear guard was walking after the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets blew continually. And then the second day they marched around the sea once, and returned into the camp. So they did for six days. On the seventh day, they rose early, as the dawn of day. They marched around the city in the, manor, the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you this city. And the sea and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall live, because she hid the messengers whom, she, whom we sent. Mm-hmm. Let you keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, unless when you have devoted them, you, you, you take any other devoted thing and make the camp of Israel a thing of full destruction and, and bring trouble upon it. But also when God and every vessel of bronze and iron and are holy to the Lord, it shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So bronze and iron. Mm, uh, are holy to the Lord. You shall go into the treasury of the Lord. <clears throat> and so the people shouted, and the trumpets were blown. And as soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout. <clears throat> and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, and every man straight before him. And they captured the city. They devo- then they devoted all the city to, the, to destruction, both men and women. <laughs> but young and old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys, mm. it was the edge of the sword. Mm-hmm. And to two men, the, but to the two men who had spied out the ring, Joshua said, Go to the prostitute's house and bring the bring out. Go to the prostitute's house and bring out from there the woman and all who belonged to her. And as he swore to her, so the young men who had so the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab and their father and mother and brothers and all who belonged and all who belonged to her. And they brought all our rel- all relatives and put them outside on the camp of Israel. <clears throat> and they burned the city with fire and everything in it. Only the silver and gold uh, and the vessels of bronze and red wine they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Hmm. House of the Lord. Uh, Rahab the prostitute and her father, and her father's household, and all who belonged to her, all who belonged to her, and Joshua saved her life. Hmm. Uh, and she's lived in Israel to this day because she hid the messenger, this is whom Joshua sent out to spy. And spy out Jericho. Joshua laid an oath on them at that time, saying, Curse before the Lord be the man who rises up and rebuilds the city of Jericho. 
At the cost of his firstborn, shall he lay his foundation, and at the cost of his youngest son, shall he set up his gates. So that the Lord was Joshua, and his fame was in all the land. But the people of Israel broke faith in regard to the devoted things. But Achan, the son of Kami, son of Zabdi, son of Zer, the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things. And the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Avon, east of Bethel. And they said to them, Go up and spy out the land. So the men went up and spied, spied out Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said, Mm, to do not have all the people go up. Uh, let, let about two of their thousand men go up and attack I. Do not make the whole people toil out up there. They are very few. They are very they are few. And about three thousand men. So about three thousand men went up from there from the people. And they fled before the men of Ai, and the men of Ai killed about thirty six of their men, and chased them before the gate as far as Shubarim, and struck them at their descent. Then the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening. He and the elders of Israel and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought this people this people over the Jordan at all, to give us into the hands of the Amaris, to destroy us? Without, without we have been content to dwell beyond the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say? When Israel has turned their backs before their enemies, for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will do hear of it and will surround us and cut off our name from the earth. <coughs> from the earth. And what will you do for your great name? And the Lord said to Joshua, Get up, why have you fallen on your face? If I have sinned, they have transgressed my covenant that I commanded. They have taken some of the devoted things they have stolen and lied and put them among their own among their own belongings. Therefore the people of Israel cannot stand before their enemies. <clears throat> they turn their backs before their enemies, because they have become devoted for destruction. I will be with you no more, unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Get up, consecrate the people and say, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, they are devoted things in your midst. Mr. Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the devoted things from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought near by your tribes. And the tribe that the Lord takes by lot shall come near by clans. And the clan that the Lord, shall take, Lord takes shall come near by households. And the household that the Lord takes shall come near man by man. And he who has taken the devoted things shall be burned with fire. And he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has done that way, just the news. So Joshua rose early in the morning, early in the morning, and brought Israel near, tribe by tribe. And the tribe of Judah was taken, and then he brought near the the clan of the clans of Judah, and the clan of the Zerahites was taken. And he brought near the clan of the Zerahites, man by man, and, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought near his household, man by man. And Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, and the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the Lord, to the Lord God of Israel, and give praise to him. And and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And I can answer Joshua. Truly I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I did. When I saw among the spoil a beautiful cloak from Shinar and two hundred shekels of silver, and a bar of gold weighing fifty shekels, then I coveted them and took them. And see, they are hidden in the earth inside my tent, with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and behold, it was hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. And they took them out of the tent and brought them to Joshua and to all the peoples of Israel. And they laid them down behold the Lord. Behold the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver and the cloak and the bar of gold, and oh, and his sons and his daughters and his oxen, and donkeys and sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them up to the valley of Eagle. And Joshua said, Why did he bring trouble on us? And the Lord brings trouble on you today. And all Israel stoned him with stones. They burned them with fire and stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones that remains to this day. And then the Lord turned from his burning anger. 
Therefore, to this day, the name of that place is called the Valley of Achor. And the Lord has said to Joshua, Do not fear and do not be dismayed. Take all the fighting men with you, and their eyes go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, and his sheep, and his sea, and his land. And you shall do to Ai and his king, as you did to Jericho and his king. And not only its spoil and its livestock, you shall take his plunder for yourselves. Lay in ambush and against the sea behind it. So Joshua and all the fighting men rose, arose to go up to Ai. And Joshua chose thirty thousand mighty men of battle and sent them out by night. And he commanded, Behold, you shall lie in ambush against the sea. Behind, do not go very far from the sea, and all of you remain ready. And I and all the people who are with me will approach the sea. And when they come out against us just as before, we shall flee before them. And they will come out after us, after us until we have drawn away, drawn them away from the sea. For they will say, They are fleeing from us just as before. So we will flee before them. And then they, and they will come out after us, until we have drawn them away from the sea. But they will say, We are fleeing us just as before. Mm. So we will flee before them. And then you will rise up from the ambush and seize the sea. For the Lord your God will give it into your hand. And the ambush, and as soon as you have taken the sea, mm. you shall set the sea on fire. You shall do according to the word of the Lord. See, I have commanded you. So Joshua set them out. Sent them out, and they went to the place of ambush and lay between Bethel and I, to the west of I. But Joshua spent that night among the people. Joshua arose early in the morning and and mustered the people and went up. He and the elders of Israel before the people to I, and all the fighting men who were with him room went up and drew near the heath, drew near before the city and encamped on the north side of I, with a ravine between them and I. He took about five hundred men. Five thousand men and set them in ambush between Bethel and I to the west of the city. So they stationed the forces, the main encampment that was north of the city, and its rear guard west of the city. But Joshua spent that night in the battle, and as soon as the king of Ai saw this, he and all his people, the men of the sea, hurried and went out early to the appointed place, so they were about to meet Israel in battle. And he did not know that there was an ambush against him behind, behind the sea. And Joshua and all Israel pretended to be beaten before them and fled in the direction of the wilderness. <clears throat> so all the people who were in the sea were called together to pursue them. And as they pursued Joshua, they were drawn away from the sea. Not a man was left from I or Bethel who did not go out after Israel. <clears throat> they left the sea open and pursued Israel. And the Lord said to Joshua, <clears throat> Stretch out the javelin that is in your hand toward toward I, but I'll give it into your hand. Mm. And Joshua stretched out the javelin that was in his hand toward the sea. And the men in the ambush rose quickly at their place. And as soon as he had stretched out his hand, they ran and entered the sea and captured it. And they hurried to set the sea on fire. So when the men of I looked back, and behold, the smoke of the city went up to heaven. And they had no power to flee this way or that. And all the people who fled to the wilderness turned back against the pursuers. And when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had captured the sea, and that the smoke of the city went up, then they turned back and struck down the men of Ai. And the others came out from the sea against them. <clears throat> against them. So they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side. And Israel struck them down, until that was, there was left none that survived or escaped. And the king of Ai they took alive and brought him near to Joshua. And Israel had finished killing all the inhabitants of Ai in the open wilderness where they pursued him, and all of them to the very last had fallen by the edge of the sword. And when Israel returned to Ai and struck it down with the edge of the sword, and all who fell that day, both men and women, and were twelve thousand, all the people of Ai. Now Joshua did not draw back his land, his hand with which he stretched out the javelin until he had defeated all the inhabitants of Ai to destruction. And the livestock and the spoil of that sea, Israel took as their plunder. According to the word of the Lord that he commanded Joshua, so Joshua burned I and made it forever a heap of ruins, as it is to this day. And he hanged the king of Ai on a tree until evening. And at sunset Joshua commanded, and they took his body down from the tree and threw it at the entrance of the gate of the sea. And they raised it over, raised over a great heap of stones, which stands there to this day. And at that time Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, on Mount Ebal, just as Moses, the servant of the Lord. Had commanded his, had commanded his people, the people of Israel, as it is written in the book of the Lord Moses, and an altar of uncut stones, upon which no man had wielded an iron tool, and they offered an unbearable offering to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. 
Jesus and there in the presence of the people of Israel, he read on the stones a copy of of the of the law of Moses, which he had written which he had written. And all Israel, so Jenna as well as native born, with their with their elders and officers and their judges stood on opposite sides of the ark of the ark before the Levitical priest, who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Half of them in front of Mount Gerizim, and half of them in front of Mount Ebel. Now just as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded at the first, to bless the people of Israel. And afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessing and the curse, according to all that had written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded that Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel, and all the women and the little ones, and the sojourners who lived among them. And as soon as all the kings who were beyond the Jordan and in the hill country and in the lowland, all along the coast of the Great Sea, <coughs> toward Lebanon, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and heard of this, they gathered together as one to fight against Joshua and Israel. When the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they, they on their part aced with cunning and went went and made ready provisions and took one out sacks with their donkeys then wine skins one out and torn and mended with one out patched sandals on their feet and one out clothes and all their provisions were dry and crumbly and they went to joshua in the camp of and the camp at gilgal and said to him and to the men of Israel, we have come from a distant country so so now make a covenant with us but the men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you live among us, then how can we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you? And where do you come from? They said to him, From a very distant country your servants have come, because of the name of the Lord your God. But we have heard a report of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, the Sihon, the king of Heshman, and of the king of Bashman, Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth. So our elders and all the inhabitants of the country, our country said to us, Take provisions in your land and for the journey and go to meet him and say to them, say to them We are your servants, come now, let us make a covenant, covenant with us. Here's our road. It was still warm when we took it from the houses as our food for the journey on the day when we set out to come to you. But now, behold, it is dry and crumbly. These wineskins were new when we filled them. And behold, but now, behold, <clears throat> they have burst, and these garments and sandals of ours are worn out from the very long journey. So the men took some of their provisions, but did not ask counsel before the Lord. Before the Lord. <clears throat> and Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them. He let them live, and the leaders of the congregation swore to them. At the end of three days, after they had made a covenant with them, they heard that they were their neighbors. They were their neighbors. They were their neighbors, and that they had lived among them. And the people of Israel set out and reached their cities on the third day. Now the cities were Gibeon, Shephir, Beeroth, and Kirchcher. But the people of Israel did not attack them, because of the leaders in the congregation and had sworn to them by the Lord, their God of Israel. And all the congregation murmured against the leaders. And all the leaders said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. And now we may not touch them, and touch them, and this we will do to them, and let them live, lest wrath be upon us, because of the oath that we swore to them. And the leader said to them, let them live. So they became cutters and wooden drawers of water for all the congregation, just as the leaders had said of them. Joshua summoned them and said to them, Why did you deceive us, saying, We are very far from you, and, you, and when you dwell among us? Now therefore you are cursed, and some of you shall never, never be anything but servants, cutters of wood, and drawers of water for the house of my God. And said Joshua, I guess he was told to your servants for a certainty that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you all that, all the land, and to destroy you, all the inhabitants of the land from before you. So he feared greatly for our lives because of you, and did this thing. And now behold, we are in your hand. Whatever seems good and right in your sight to do to us, do it. So he did this to them, and delivered them out of the hand of Israel, and they did not kill them. But Joshua made them that day covers of wood and drawers of wood for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord to this day, in the place that he should choose. 
And as soon as, soon as Adoni said that King of Jerusalem heard how Joshua had captured Ai and had devoted it to destruction, he threw him to Ai and its king, as he had done to Jericho and its king, how the inhabitants of Gideon had made peace with Israel and were among He feared greatly, because Gideon was a great city, like one of the royal cities, and because he was greater than Ai, and all the men were warriors. So Adoni and Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, to Piram, king of Jarmuth, to Japhia, king of Lachish, and to Debir, king of Edwin, saying, Come unto me and help me, and let us strike Gideon. For he has made peace with Joshua and with the people of Israel. And the five kings of Hamor, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered their forces, and went up with their, all their armies and encamped at Gibeon, against Gibeon, and made war against him. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua, sent to Joshua, and left the camp of Gil- Gilgal, saying, Do not relax and your hand from your servants. Come to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings from of the Amorites who dwell in the hill country are gathered against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hands. No man of them shall stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, having Having marched up all night from Gilgal, and the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who struck them with a great blow at Gibeon, and chased them by the way of Asin, of Beth Horon, and struck them as far as Azkot and Makeda, and they fled before Israel, while they were going down at the Asin of Beth Horon, and the Lord threw down large stones from heaven um, that as far as Asgur, and they died. There were more who died because of the hailstones than the sons of Israel killed with the sword. And at that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day, and then the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel, and he said it into, in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still, give you and men, in the valley of Aijal. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stopped to the, in the midst of heaven, and did not hurry to set about, set for about a whole day. There has no, been no day like it before since. So when the Lord heeded the voice of the man, for the Lord fought at for Israel, so Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, but to the camp at Gilb. These five kings fled and hid themselves in the cave of Makeda. And it was told to Joshua, the yeah, five kings have been found, hidden in the cave of Makeda. And Joshua said, Roll the large stones against the mouth of the cave, and set men by it to guard them. But do not stay there yourself. Pursue your enemies, attack their red guard. Do not let them enter their cities, for the Lord your God has given them into your hand. And Joshua and the sons of Israel had finished striking them with a great blow until they were wiped out. And, the rem- and when the remnant that remained of them had entered into the fortified cities, then all the people returned safe to Joshua in the camp at Makeda. No man moved his tongue against any of the people of Israel. And Joshua <coughs> said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring those five kings out to me from the cave. And they did so, and brought those five <coughs> kings out to him from the cave. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the, and the king of Eglon. And when they brought the Jews kings out to Joshua, Joshua summoned all the men of Israel and said to the chiefs of the men of war who had gone with me, Come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet on their necks. And Joshua said, Do not be afraid or dismayed. Be shown and courage, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And after Joshua struck them and put them to death, and he hanged them on five trees. And, after, and they hung on the trees until evening. And at the time of the going down of the sun, Joshua came in, and they took them down from the trees and threw them into the cave where they had hidden themselves. And they set large stones against the mouth of the cave, which remained to this very day. And as for Makeda, Joshua captured it on the day and struck it, and its king with the edge of the sword. He devoted to destruction every person in it. He left none remaining, and he did to the king of Makeda, just as he had done to the king of Jericho. And Joshua and all who were with him passed on from Makeda to Libna, and fought against Libna. And the Lord gave it Esther and its king to, into the hand of, of Israel, and he struck it with the edge of the sword. And every person in he left none remaining, and, and he did to this, did to its king as he had done to the king of Jericho. And Joshua and all who were with him passed on from Libna to Lachish, and laid siege to it, and fought against it. And the Lord struck Lachish, into the hand of Israel, and he captured it on the second day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and every person in it, as he had done to Libna. Then Horam king of Gezer came up to help Lachish, and Joshua struck him and his people, 
until he left none remaining. Then Joshua and all Israel were with him, passed on from that chief to Eglon, and they laid siege to it and fought against it. And they captured it on that day, and struck it with the edge of the sword. And he devoted every person in its destruction that day, as he had done to the chief. And Joshua and all Israel were with him went up from Eglon to Hebron. And they fought against it and captured it and struck it with the edge of the sword, and its king and its king and its towns, and every person in it. He left no remains, as he had done to Eglon, and devoted it to destruction on every person in it. Then Joshua and all Israel with him turned back to the beer and fought against it. And he captured it with its king and all its towns, and they struck them with the edge of the sword, and devoted to destruction every person in it. He left none remaining, just as he had done to Hebron and to Libna and its king. He he did to so he did to the Peter and its king. So Joshua struck the whole land, the hill country and the Negev and the lowland and all the slopes and all their king. He left none remaining, and devoted to destruction and all that breathed, just as the Lord God of Israel had commanded. And Joshua struck them from Kadesh Barnea as far as Gaza, and all the country of Goshen as far as Gibeon. And Joshua had captured all these kings and their land at one time, because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. And then Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to the camp at Gilgal. When Jabin, king of Hazor, heard of this, he sent to Jobab, king of Madden, and the king, and to the king of Shema, and to the king of Ak- Akshaph, and to the kings who were in the northern hill country, and in, and in the Arab south of Chinneroth, and in the Lord. <laughs> Proverbs 5. My son, be attentive to my wisdom, incline your ear to my understanding, but may keep discretion and for you, and your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a little bit, and women drip honey, and her speech is smooth and oil, but in the end she is big as a well, woman, sharp as a two edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps will the past to shore, and what she does not ponder the past of life. Her ways one day, and she does not know. And now, sons, listen to me, do not and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep her away far from her, and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honour to others, and your years to the merciless. Let strangers take their fill of your strength, and your labours go to the house of a foreigner. And at the end of your life you grow, and when your flesh when your flesh and body are consumed, and you say, How I hate a discipline, and my heart despise reproof. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers, or incline my ears to my instructors. I am at the brink of utter ruin, and the assembled congregation. Drink water from your own system, flowing water from your own mouth. Should your springs be scattered abroad, streams of water in your streets. Let them be for yourself alone, and not for strangers with you. Let your foundation be let your fountain be blessed, and rejoice in the wife of your youth. A lovely dear, a graceful day, let a breast for you at all times with delight. But be intoxicated always in the love. Why should you be intoxicated, my son, with a forbidden woman, and embrace the blossom of our, of an adulteress? For a man's ways are before the eyes of people, and he ponders all his past. He the iniquity of the wicked in his name, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. He does for lack of discipline, and because of his great folly he is led astray. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord's works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to the most, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always. Ch- Child, he nor will we keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. And as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like the flower of the field. For well, the wind passes over it and is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the step is love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to the children's children, and to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. And the Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and in his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, O his host, his mistress, who do his will. Bless the Lord in all his works, in all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now this done, I shall now do the Lord's prayer. Please by your heads, and our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
but he also adapts as he rises up again on our adapters. He acknowledges the temptation, but delivers from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.